Curious Kids, welcome back to the Curious Kid Cast. I'm your host, Andy, and today we're diving into one of the most giggle worthy mysteries of the human body. But before we start, I want to give a big shout out to Emma from Portland, Oregon, who sent us today's question. Emma was having a tickle fight with her little brother last weekend when she suddenly wondered, Why does he make me laugh like a hyena when he tickles me? But when I try to tickle myself, absolutely nothing happens. Great question, Emma. So grab your thinking caps and maybe warn your siblings that you might want to test some tickle theories later because we're about to explore the wonderfully weird world of why you can't tickle yourself. And trust me, by the end of this episode, you'll know more about tickles than a professional giggle scientist. Yes, that's apparently a real thing. Let's start with a little experiment. Right now, wherever you are listening, try to tickle yourself. Go ahead, poke your own ribs. Wiggle your fingers under your own arms. I'll wait. Nothing, right? Just you poking yourself like you're checking if you're still alive. No giggles, no squirms. Just the weird realization that you're basically high-fiving your own armpit. But when your annoying older cousin does the exact same thing, suddenly you're rolling on the floor like a laughing potato. Here's the thing about tickles. There are actually two different types, and they have names that sound like they came from a wizard's spell book. The first one is called nismesis, which sounds like something you'd catch from a magical sneeze. This is the light tickle like when a feather brushes your skin or when you feel like there's a bug crawling on you, but it's just your imagination being dramatic again. The second type is called gargalesis, which honestly sounds like the name of a grumpy dragon. But this is the big kahuna of tickles, the kind that makes you laugh so hard you forget your own name. This is what happens when someone attacks your ribs or squeezes your sides and you suddenly sound like a broken squeaky toy. Now, here's where your brain gets really sneaky. Your brain is basically like that friend who always knows what movie you're going to pick before you even look at the options. When you try to tickle yourself, your brain is sitting there going, oh, here comes little Timmy's hand toward his own ribs. How predictable. I'm not falling for this amateur hour nonsense. Your brain is constantly playing detective, trying to predict what's going to happen next. It's like having a really smart, really smug fortune teller living in your head. So when you move your own hand to tickle yourself, your brain already has the whole story figured out. No surprise, no giggles, just disappointment and the realization that you can't even entertain yourself properly. But when someone else tickles you, oh boy, that's when your brain goes into full panic mode. It's like, wait, what's happening? I didn't authorize this tickle attack. This is not in my schedule. Sound the giggle alarm. And that's when you start laughing like you just heard the world's funniest joke about a banana wearing socks. Now, let me introduce you to a very important part of your brain called the cerebellum. Don't worry, you don't have to spell it on a test, but you should know it's basically your brain's personal bodyguard. It sits at the back of your head like a tiny bouncer, keeping track of all your movements and making sure you don't walk into walls or trip over your own feet more than absolutely necessary. The cerebellum is also the reason you can't tickle yourself. It's like having a really overprotective parent for your tickle responses. When you try to tickle yourself, the cerebellum jumps in and says, Nope, I see exactly what you're doing there, kiddo. I'm canceling this tickle show before it even starts. It's basically the fun police of your brain. Here's something pretty cool, though. Scientists actually built tickling robots to study this. Yes, you heard that right. There are actual scientists out there whose job is to build robots that tickle people. Imagine putting that on your resume. Professional qualifications can make robots that make humans giggle. What they discovered was fascinating. When people controlled the robot with a joystick to tickle themselves, it still wasn't funny. But when the robot started doing its own thing, tickling at random times or in unexpected ways, suddenly people were laughing again. The robot had successfully tricked their brains into being surprised. So if you ever meet a tickle robot from the future, make sure it has a good sense of humor and timing. Otherwise, you'll just be standing there being poked by a confused machine while you stare at each other awkwardly. 
But why do we even laugh when we're tickled? I mean, it's not like tickling feels amazing. Sometimes it's actually kind of uncomfortable and makes you want to escape like you're in some sort of giggle prison. Well, scientists think tickling is actually about bonding and playing with each other. It's your body's way of saying, hey, I trust you enough to let you make me make weird noises. Even animals tickle each other. Rats make happy little squeaking sounds when they're tickled, which is probably the cutest thing you'll hear all day. Monkeys tickle each other too, though I imagine monkey tickle fights are way more chaotic than human ones. Now, here's something interesting. Some people actually can sort of tickle themselves, but they have to get creative about it. They might use a feather or a back scratcher, basically tricking their brain into thinking the tool isn't really part of them. It's like playing hide and seek with your own nervous system. Scientists have also used mirrors and virtual reality to trick people's brains into thinking someone else is doing the tickling. Suddenly, people are laughing at their own hands like they've never seen them before. Your brain can be surprisingly gullible sometimes. Let me share some fun tickle facts that'll make you the most interesting person at your lunch table. First, not everyone is ticklish, and that's totally normal. Some people are just immune to the tickle attack like they have a built-in tickle shield. They're basically the superheroes of the tickle world. Babies start laughing from tickles when they're only about four months old. That means before they can even say mama or dada, they're already masters of the giggle response. They come into this world ready to laugh at finger pokes, which is honestly a pretty good life strategy. Here's a weird historical fact. People used to have tickling contests in ancient times to see who could stand it the longest. Imagine being known throughout your village as the tickle champion of 1542. That's either the best or worst claim to fame ever. And get this. Charles Darwin, the famous scientist who figured out how animals evolve, actually studied tickling back in the 1800s. He thought it was super important for how humans connect with each other. So next time someone tickles you, you can say, ah, yes, this is just evolutionary bonding behavior that Darwin would find fascinating. I'm sure that'll make the tickle fight way less weird. All right, curious kids, it's time for our fun quiz. I'm going to ask you three questions about what we just learned, and then I'll give you the answers. Ready? Question number one, what are the two types of tickles called? The answer is nismesis. That's the light tickle. And gargalesis. That's the laugh until you cry tickle. Don't worry if you can't pronounce them. Even I had to practice saying them without sounding like I was casting a magic spell. Question number two. What part of your brain acts like the tickle police and stops you from tickling yourself? That would be the cerebellum. It's like having a tiny detective in your brain that always knows what you're up to and ruins the surprise before you can even giggle. And question number three, true or false? Scientists have built robots specifically to study tickling. True, and honestly, that might be the coolest job ever. Imagine going to work every day knowing you're going to make robots that make people laugh. That's the kind of career that would make every family dinner conversation interesting. So there you have it, Emma from Portland and all you other curious kids. The mystery of why you can't tickle yourself is solved. Your brain is just too smart for its own good, always predicting your moves like it's playing chess while you're playing checkers. The next time someone tickles you and you're rolling around laughing like a seal who just heard a great joke, you'll know it's because your cerebellum got surprised and your brain decided to throw a giggle party. And when you try to tickle yourself and nothing happens, You'll know it's not because you're broken, it's because your brain is working exactly like it's supposed to. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to share it with your friends and family, maybe challenge them to try tickling themselves first, and then blow their minds with your new scientific knowledge. And don't forget to subscribe to the Curious Kid Cast so you never miss an episode of Wonderfully Weird Science. Do you have a question that's been bugging you like an itch you can't scratch? Maybe you've wondered why the sky is blue or how birds know which way to fly south, or why adults drink that bitter brown liquid they call coffee and actually seem to enjoy it. Whatever your curious question is, head over to our website at curiouskidcast.com and send it our way. Your question might just be featured in a future episode. Thanks for joining me today on this ticklish adventure through the mysteries of your amazing brain. Keep being curious, keep asking questions, and remember, science is everywhere even in the silliest things like tickle fights with your siblings. 
Until next time, this is Andy signing off from the Curious Kid cast. Stay curious, stay awesome, and maybe go test out your new tickle knowledge on an unsuspecting family member. For science, of course. Hey, let your question